Welcome to the Tom Matt Show. You are walking through the front door of the retirement zone. And now, your host, Tom Matt. Last week, Dr. Deborah Heiser was here. Unfortunately, I forgot to click the record button on my video, but the audio is awesome because we talked about gaslighting. And I went right to the well with her on this number one search term in 2023 was gaslighting. And <laughs> and, and my guest today, Jamie, Jamie, I guess we'll talk about that with Jamie here in a second because he's probably had, he probably have a lot of knowledge on this stuff. But you want to listen to that episode, you guys, because gaslighting is very over and misused now because it became mainstream and people just use it for everything. And it's like, I'm going to go fill up my car with gas lighting or whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just crazy. But the real definition of what it is and why you need to be aware of this behavior, because this is an insidious thing, this gaslighting stuff. Check it out. Dr. Deborah Heiser last week, you know, her 41st visit with us. Okay. Back to talking some law with my brother from another mother, Jamie White. Jamie White is a new sponsor of the show. Been doing really some really great things. He's the founder of White Law PLLC, and they specialize in lots of different things. As I said pre-show in the, in the recording, we're going to just riff on different things to feature what White Law does and some stories. And then towards the end of this episode, and probably toward the end of every episode with Jamie, we'll be talking some... Uh, Hunter non hunter because he's a huge outdoors person. We're going to talk a little bit about why decompressing um, is very important for everyone, especially professionals who are working so darn hard nowadays. But Jamie White specializes in criminal defense and civil litigation. And if you missed the first episode, and I had so much good feedback on that first episode, you guys, it was just crazy. Jamie's story about why he got into law was so compelling. I had no idea that he was going to talk about some stuff with his family back in the 70s. You need to check out that episode because that puts that puts the real person with the real thing. And that's what we like to do here with our with our guests, especially our sponsors. He's a very experienced trial attorney, having tried numerous homicide, serious felony cases to completion in various Michigan courts. He, he he's a would you say, Jamie, that you're really um, you cut your teeth on the civil litigation and um, and the practice areas. Let me get to bring this up here. But the. Um, Personal injury, was that kind of the beginning for you guys, if I remember correctly? That was that was the whole thing? Yeah. So, well, the beginning was, Tom, you know, anything <laughs> that walked in the door, <laughs> anybody that- Remember you yeah. said you're having meetings <laughs> at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yes, absolutely. You know, my first uh, client meeting was in my wife's bedroom. <laughs> um, we, we At that time, we were dating and we had separate residences. But, you know, people will ask me, you know, what kind of law do you practice? And now I can tell them, but I used to say, what kind do you need? <laughs> you know, and we would, um, you know, try to accommodate everything. We were general practice. Yeah. Um, you know, I was very fortunate. Um, I had worked at the prosecutor's office all through law school. Um, you know, my dad was a prison warden. My brother was a state cop. So um, criminal justice, just, and I was a criminal justice major. So, um, I, you know, I really made my way doing criminal law. People may disagree, but we were probably the top uh, criminal law practice in our area. Um, for a significant period of time, you know, as you indicated, we tried numerous homicide cases. I've never lost one, too. I would throw that out there. Wish we could say that about the Spartans. Oh, my God. That's a whole other episode, man. <laughs> that, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, criminal law was really um, it kind of paved the way for me to grow and do some other things. Uh, as you indicated, we do a lot of personal injury work. Um, I have a partnership with Morgan & Morgan, who is probably the biggest personal injury firm in the country, if not the world. Um, and I'm one of their exclusive partners. And, um, you know, we have hundreds of cases with them. Um, and then, you know, in particular, over the last six or seven years, you know, I fell into representing victims of sexual assault. And we're going to talk about that in depth here throughout the show, everybody. Jamie, let yeah. me let me let me rudely interrupt you here. Just say, okay, yeah. let's stop there with with because we're going to do the law talk stuff here shortly, everybody. But you know how sure. we do the show, and I kind of started things off on uh, a little off foot here. But it's so interesting talking to Jamie about this. Let's do the this is your life because you've had since I've seen you last, you've had some interesting things happening in the. How's the family? How are you? How are your children? Please talk about them a little bit, and then we'll get into some law talk. Yeah, thanks for asking. You know, I have uh, four children. I have a daughter in Chicago, and I have three teenage boys. Um, my oldest boy, you know, we're kind of 
putting our arms around him right now. He's a senior and he had been a heck of an athlete, you know, his entire life. Um, I coached him until mo- uh, middle school and then I turned it over to the guys that are smarter than me. Um, you know, and he was pegged to be, you know, the guy um, and he broke his hand multiple times and then he broke his other hand um, taking fastballs from a pitching machine. So he's missing out on this year. And, you know, East Lansing is number two in the state. And, um, you know, they're looking at regionals next week and they're projected to go to Breslin for the championship. So, um, you know, we're trying to take care of him and he's doing well. He's a four point student. We never had hoop dreams. Academics was always our thing. Uh, My younger son, my youngest son, however, is really a good player and um he's oh. actually trying out for the swish program next weekend which is a you know they travel to dallas texas lexington you know he, is this basketball or is this baseball uh, basketball and he's a heck of a football player too oh, okay you know, so he goes basketball up and football. grabs everything he's a six foot one and he's in eighth grade oh my goodness yeah he's a player um and then you know my middle son um he he decided not, he gave up on athletics a couple of years ago, but again, four point student. We really are so blessed. I'm, and my wife gets all the credit. <laughs> I'm just going to put Smart that out move. there. Yeah. She gets all the credit and, uh, and, and everybody's doing really well. So, you know, we're really blessed in that way. Please mention all their names, would you, Jamie? Because the kids always like to hear their names on radio and podcasting. And we can talk about that wife of yours who keeps things rolling, just like Sandy does for me, Christine. She's just, yeah. I mean, without those two, without Sandy and Christine, you and I aren't even talking, bro. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I'm, I don't even know if I'd be here. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so my daughter Haley, she's in Chicago. My oldest son Derek, uh, and then my who's named after my brother, uh, my middle son Alex, uh, who's named after my mother-in-law, who's since passed. She was, um, and then uh, my youngest son Cameron. And Cameron's six foot one in eighth grade. Yeah, man, and he can play. And he can play. And you guys got some, you got some talent out East Lansing. I might have to even go out to Breslin to see that because that was one of my events back in the day when I was working at the university. For the telecom department, I worked at, that was my event every year for almost 25 years, the high school tournament. Yeah. I loved working both the, the boys and the girls. And if you ever get a chance, everybody digress a little bit, you know, me, Tom, I digress all the time. But if you ever get a chance to go to the Breslin Center for the high school tournaments, for the, um, for the semis and the finals, it's so much fun. And there's so much passion because so many, and Jamie, you know this because you've been over there so many times, but the, to, to watch the student athletes come in with their eyes so wide open and the parents coming in with their eyes wide open. I remember when my daughter, Ashley, was in high school in 2005, she was at Holt and they went to the finals and it was so exciting. It's just, and I graduated with Irvin Johnson. So, I mean, you know, we had the state championship. Those things are so hard to do. And boy, you guys got a really great program out there. Now you you talked about Derek, you talked about Derek breaking his hand on a pitching machine, but he's a basketball player. So he plays both. Well, he played basketball. He played football too. He played, he played all three and he was a high jumper. Um, you know, he would wow. leave baseball practice and go high jump and they'd let him play even though he wasn't practicing because he could jump pretty, he, he could get up there. Dang. But yeah, he played, you know, he played basketball. That was his favorite for a long time. Um, you know, he stopped growing. He's about six foot. And, uh, then he broke his hand and that took him, you know, he was, uh, sophomore when that happened and he kept it just was one of those places where it kept breaking Tom over yep. and over and over yep. um and so that kind of pulled him out of the rotation and um you know I right now East Lansing is loaded I mean they've got Andre Hudson's kid they got Kelvin Torbert's kid yeah you know they got JL I mean th- these guys they call it lob ball <laughs> I mean they were, they're running plays but a lot of it is just toss and dunk I want to go see them I'm I have to get with you let me let me take this through Jamie because we're going to go to come up to break here Jamie White's back with us sure. everybody law talk Jamie's one of our sponsors. He's here quarterly. We like to talk about all different facets of the law industry. And again, as I said in that, a little earlier in this segment, if you missed that first episode with Jamie where he talked about his life story, you want to go back and get that one because it's so, so good. All right. Listen to the Tom Matt Show. Let's talk law with my buddy, Jamie White. You're listening to the Tom Matt Show. This segment of the Tom Matt Show is brought to you in part by the Source of Light and Power by band leader Archival and broadcaster Mitch Anderson. Hear the sound that is endorsed by Odyssey headphones, linear tube audio, RME converters, and Peluso microphones at sourceoflightandpower.bandcamp.com. This is the Tom Matt Show. This 
second segment of the Tom Man Show is sponsored by Craig, 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 Craig Styles. Just had our taxes done last night with Nikolai Luke, Simplified Tax. Nikolai, what's happening? Love that guy so much. Known him for like 25 years. And we're talking about just, you know, we hit our numbers with Craig because we took all of our all of our retirement zone savings from my career at MSU and Sandy's career in healthcare, gave it all to Craig. Craig manages for us. We got things to do. And believe me, you guys, it's been working out. Craig Styles, Ameriprise Financial, been with us for a long time, been on the show. He's a financial fitness guru. If you ever want to get to know him a little bit, go listen to some of those episodes on the website. There's like 25 of them there. And same thing with all of our sponsors. They're, we we want you to go and just kind of peruse around Ameriprise Financial. They're our advisor. We want them to become yours with the right financial advisor. Life can be ism, everybody. Be brilliant. Call Craig 1 800 528 1355. Local number is 517 483 4893. Craig.styles at ampf.com. Offices are located at 2400 Lake Lansing Road. Sweet B is in Brilliant, Lansing, Michigan, 48912. Stations that have carried us, will carry us, have carried us in the past all over with the Michigan Talk Network and some of our independents. WGHN 92.1 Grand Haven, WGIM 1240 in Lansing, the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, where we're on that station with all of those other shows. With thanks to Stephen Ivy Gruber, who we love so much. They're so awesome. WJRW 1340 AM in Grand Rapids carried us for a long time. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon Whitehall. We're all over the place. WYPV FM 94.5 way up in Mackinac City. We have stations carrying us up in the UP, mom and pop stations on the Michigan Talk Network. And I thank you for listening if you're picking us up up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And of course, we have our PBS affiliate, which I'm very, very proud to say at Michigan State. And thank you to Brad, station manager, general manager over at WKR at Michigan State University, AM 870, News Talk, AM 870, carrying us at 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoons. Wonderful. 102.3 FM on the simulcast, and you can always get the stream on any of these stations that carry us all over the place. They play us all the time. It's, we're a weekend show. Thank you again to Craig Styles for creating Desiderary Analytics, which that's how he has his proprietary algorithm, making the changes, doing the things, and helping you figure out what you need to do with your money so you can do whatever you need to do with your life. That's the whole thing with that. And we have several books, four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon. Please check those out. Generation Us is the latest. And Maximize Your Quality of Life was our first. And in between, we wrote a couple other small books. Please check them out. They're all there. All right, Jamie White's with us today. Let's talk law. Love talking law with Jamie. Smart dude. Super cool. And just love having some conversations with him. Just went through the family stuff, talked about the kids. You've got quite the the roster. Parents that are out there who have multiple, you have four children, and they're all athletes. So let me tell you, I know being a, being a papa now with two grandchildren who are very active, up-and-coming athletes. Jamie, when you have athletes, <laughs> you guys are probably – it's no wonder you're hard to get a hold of sometimes because yeah. you're hauling kids everywhere, going to games, going to practices, and your kids are a little older now. But if you had advice for parents out there that are trying to raise because your kids are good students, really good students, and they're really good athletes, what tip, if you had one tip to give to parents from between you and Christine, what would you say you, that would be the one tip? Don't take it too seriously and don't put pressure on the kids. You know, um, I, 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 you know, doing the AAU thing for years, you know, some of the parents, um, it was troubling, you know, uh, you know, between screaming at the ref, screaming at their kids. Um, you know, I mean, we all know 1% of these kids are going to play D one ball and, you know, to see some of the parents ruin it for the children was, you know, it was hard to watch. Um, you know, we always encouraged our kids to just do their best and have fun. If I could offer one other tip, go ahead. <laughs> they've got seat back, they've got portable seat backs now <laughs> you can put in the bleachers. <laughs> you know, that was uh that was like sliced wonder bread to us. Um, because sometimes we spend eight hours in a gym in one day. Yeah. But really just, you know, support the kids, let them have fun. You know, they're meeting they're meeting the right kind of kids around the right kind of parents, you know, memories are going to last their entire life. When I first started coaching as a young person, Mike Devlin, I don't know if you know Mike, he's out in Meridian Township, he runs their athletic department, and he would make all the volunteer coaches go through a program 
And, you know, one of the things he talked about is, you know, most of us were ex-athletes and he'd say, remember back to who your coaches were and, you know, who are the ones you like and who are the ones you didn't like. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think people understand the impression they have on young people, um, whether it's a coach, a parent and so on and so on. So, you know, my advice is just to have fun with it and um, support them when you can. And when they lose, it's not, you know, don't be critical. I mean, there's a lot of uh, parent coaches out there and they mean well, but at the end of the day, they're just kids. And, um, you know, it's just keeping them out of trouble, Tom. You know, I mean, uh, I, we'd spend, I think I spent hundreds of nights in a hotel, you know, in Indiana and in Ohio and Kentucky. And for us, it was, you know, of course it was challenging, but it was great, you know, because my wife was running the restaurant company. I was running the law firm. And then over the weekend, you know, we'd all cram in a hotel room and it had some interesting experiences, but it was great family time. So, you know, take advantage of it. It goes fast and, um, you know, just don't put too much pressure on the kids. And it, the whole thing, and I'll, I'll close this. And that was very, very good advice. Jamie White's with us, everybody. Let's talk law. But the, the good advice that you give, the discipline that kids learn playing athletics or being in any club. Now, I'm not just saying athletics. I'm going to say if you're involved in any extracurricular activities that take practice and they take discipline, could be piano, could be singing, could be dancing, could be cheer. You know, we're not saying it's just you got to be, a you know, the, the big two, big three sports. Anything that keeps kids active is going to help them academically. And I'm very much a huge proponent for education and lifelong education. And our kids, we got to give them the foundation and then let them flourish. So thank you for saying all that. And you've done some really wonderful work. Jamie, set this up now because we're going to come to break here in a couple minutes here. And we want to talk in depth about this clergy abuse case that you have going and set that up. Would you please and kind of tell us what's happening? You talked a little bit about it in the previous episode, but we're going to do a deep dive on this today. And then we'll talk some Hunter on Hunter later in the show. Can you set that up for me, please? Yeah. So I'm not sure how much you want me to go in the weeds, but I'll, I'll just say that um, 30 states around the country have made the courts available for victims of sex abuse that otherwise would not have had access um, we've been actively involved with the legislature to make Michigan the 31st state. I was actually on the phone yesterday with Senator Hope Pohansky, who's incredible. Um, we intend to introduce legislation relatively soon, and it's going to provide access to the courts for um, some people that suffered horrific abuse at the hands of people they trusted. Yeah, and the and the, de- the thing that Jamie and I talked about yesterday. Thank you, Jamie. We'll set this up, and I'll take this. I'll carry this through to break. When we talked yesterday, kind of setting up um, um, our pre-production show call, the the whole thing was, and there's a, there's so many details. I don't want to misspeak here, but the part of it that I found very um, kind of disconcerting, and not kind of, it was disconcerting, was that when people reach a certain age, that the statute of limitations, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie, we'll talk about this when we come back. You'll lay the whole thing out. But it's like you only have a very short window, and I think that's what part of the 31st state, uh, what you're talking about with being able to go back and do these things. I know from having my own experience in mental health, a lot of these things are suppressed forever, and it takes a long, long time to figure out why I feel this way. And I've been down that road. And so we'll leave it there because we're going to come up on break. Let me reset this and we'll come back. You're listening to The Tom Man Show. Thank you again to our segment two sponsor, Craig Stiles of Ameriprise Financial. For more information on services provided by Craig, please visit AmeriprizeAdvisors.com slash Craig.Stiles or by calling 517-483-4893. You're tuned in to The Tom Man Show. Third segment of the Tom Matt Show is sponsored by my guest today, Jamie White and Christine White. We didn't really talk much about Christine. She's the backbone of what we do, just like with Sandy's the backbone of what I do. But she is absolutely the, the go-to person for us, and we've talked about that. White Law, where justice meets compassion. And we're going to talk extensively about all kinds of different law issues with Jamie. I'm so grateful to have him with us. I thank Dave DeMarco for putting us together and Jamie sponsoring his the Mad Dog Minutes, which are continuing to grow and flourish and do really well. People really like those things. If you missed any of those, just go to our website, TomMatShow.com. You can find all that stuff there, the, the clips, the the YouTube channels, the, the TikTok, all that stuff. White Law is your advocate in times of need. We've talked about this. We're going to continue to talk about this. We're going to talk about the 
victim of clergy abuse here coming back in just a second here, everybody, so stick around on this. Jamie and the whole team, they're, they are there to listen. Sandy and I actually went to the office yesterday because we were out in Okemos and we wanted, and I saw White Lawn. I was like, hey, let's go into Jamie's office. Maybe Christine and Jamie's there. And they weren't, but the, the office is sweet. And it's like, it's so professional. It's so nice. You guys want to check this out. White Law is your advocate for times of need. They will support and fight for what you deserve. Jamie will research cases. And if it has some merit, he'll take care of it. If it doesn't, he'll let you know. But the thing is, you need to get some information from these professionals. That's why we have these guests on our show who know what they're talking about. You can contact White Law for a free consultation. Did I say free? I said free. Free consultation. Visit whitelawplc.com. Sweet website. I'm looking at it right now. It's just awesome. I'm gonna read a I'm gonna read a testimony here in just a second off of the website. It's really, really good. Whitelawplc.com. Call 517-777-9785. We've got them splashed all over. You can find his Jamie. All of our sponsors at the bottom of our homepage, TomMatshow.com. Go to the bottom of that, click right through. I want to read a testimonial here. Real quick, everyone I worked with at White Law was a professional, responsive, and courteous during all of my interactions with them as a client. From Jamie, who first assessed my case, to Dan, who represented me com- competently and thoroughly. Also, Blake and Natalie. So, see the team, everybody? Blake and Natalie on the support team were excellent at providing assistance whenever I needed it. Everyone answered my emails and calls promptly. They treated me with respect, and that's a huge word, respect, and they were pleasant to work with. Isn't that something? On top of that, Dan got me the outcome I wanted. Voila, victory. We want wins. I want. I would not hesitate to use their services again. If I find myself in need, I wholeheartedly recommend them to others. That's S. Selleck coming right off of the website. So please check that out, White Law, PLLC. Dot com. All right, Jamie, let's talk about, you just, you set this up a little bit, 31st State, and you were mentioning in, in our call yesterday too with, um, you know, doing some work with Curtis Hertel, who I've met. I know Curtis. He's a good dude. And all of the people that you're connected with at the state legislature. But let's set it up. I mean, that sexual abuse thing, as I said in the close of the previous segment, you may have suppressed this, everybody, because of the mental health issues that go on. That's what happens in the mind is you will suppress bad memories, but it may still affect your behavior and you don't know why. And so, Jamie, pick it up from there, would you please? Because that's where people, they may they may go into therapy and come to find out, oh my gosh, you know, they remember these things that were so far deep suppressed. I'm sure you've seen this. You deal with this. Yeah. And it's a tough topic, man. It's a tough topic, but we got to talk about this. Yeah, it is really a tough topic. Um, So, you know, the movement really started in 2003 in California as far as opening the door. What I mean by opening the doors, you've indicated you have so much time to file civil litigation um, and it it differs state by state. Um, And then, of course, we had the spotlight movie, which really shone um, a light, for lack of better words, on, on, on the national problem. Um, it's not only clergy, you know, there are other institutional abuses, coaches, you know, the Boy Scouts have gone through hell. Um, but the, the unique thing about clergy, Tom, that, you know, and I was raised Catholic, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't hate the Catholic Church. I can tell you that the vast majority of the advocates that I work with around the country have some level of um, background with the Catholic Church. And even today, members of the church want this to be rectified because they want to put it behind them. But what was unique for decades and decades and decades and decades is, you know, you have 12 year old boys and they're told that the priest and for all practical purposes is God, right? And is connected to God. Um, And so that alone sets the table for manipulation. Um, And, you know, what we've seen is that priests go out and they prey on the most vulnerable kids. Um, You know, they don't pray. I mean, nobody ever messed with me. I had a mom, I had a dad, you know, I, you know, I, I would have said no, you know, but but they prey on the most vulnerable people, people who um, maybe are a little bit lost, a little bit lonely. And they use that pulpit 
to bring them into a very difficult situation. Um, so what we're doing, Michigan really was the bottom of the barrel as far as statute limitations was concerned for a very long time. At one point in time, um, you had to, re if you were a child, you had to report the abuse by the time you were 19 years old. And, you know, these are young men who haven't even had, some of them haven't even had a girlfriend yet, you know, so the idea of coming forward was just not realistic. Um, and so we have had some success. We passed some legislation in 2018. Unfortunately, because of the legislative makeup, um, it, it was narrowly focused and it only addressed um, victims of doctors in effect the Nasser victims, and that's what led to ultimately getting those women compensated and non-compensation as far as um, changing the way that university practices, not only Michigan State, but universities all over the country woke up and said, we've got to do something different here. Um, so we are in the process of passing a bill that's going to open what's called a revival window, and that will allow people to who's bar who are time barred you know their their claim is too old under the current law but it will open a window and allow them a period of time to go back and bring their claims you know and there's a lot of naysayers you know but at, at the end of the day it's not as if and this is a big piece that i think people need to understand we're not asking that everybody just gets a check you know, we're just asking for access to the courts. You know, you still need to have your evidence. You still need to present your proofs. It's not as if, okay, we've uh, got this um, revival window and therefore, you know, you're going to get $100 or $100,000 or whatever it is. Uh, so we're working very um, closely. I talked to the governor a couple of weeks ago and, um, you know, I do believe that she's a sexual, she's a survivor herself. And um, she is on board, unfortunately. And I don't want to turn this into a Republican Democrat thing because there are a lot of Republicans that do support this. But in the world we live in, there's a partisan divide. And up until very recently, we had what you call the trifecta. You know, the Democrats ran the House, they ran the Senate, and they had the the governor's mansion. And that has changed. Um, a couple of representatives successfully ran for mayor. Um, but we're very optimistic that we're going to be able to get the support we need to get these gentlemen access to the courts and, you know, what happens after that happens. And, you know, again, just to, you know, we get a lot of blowback from the Catholic church. They have a very effective lobbyist who's, who's a good friend of mine um, has been for a long time, but this is his job. And what we've seen in other States, Tom, is it's good for the church. You know, the, the attendance in the church has dropped dramatically um, over the course of the last 30 years. And I contribute a lot of that to the problem, the systemic problem that the church has had as it relates to sexual abuse. What we've seen in states where um, there's been enforcement and change is attendance has risen and people are more comfortable and, and they're not shameful of, of talking about the church. Thank you, Jamie, for that. When we come back from break, I want to I want to go right into the, the the naysayers, as Jamie was talking about. And what I just jotted down listening to Jamie's story is confidence and trust in, in your church and why that you want to allow this litigation, because that will bring the confidence and trust back into your institution. Jamie White's here. You're listening to The Tom Man Show. Thank you again to our segment three sponsor, White Law PLLC, where justice meets compassion. White Law is your advocate in times of need. We are here to listen, support, and fight for what you deserve. Contact White Law today for your free consultation. Visit us at whitelawplc.com or call 517-777-9785. This is the Tom Matt Show. Love doing radio so much. Learn so much. So great. Fourth segment of this radio program. And again, I'm so grateful to our sponsors and to our guests for coming on the show and sharing this great knowledge, just like Brock Fletcher does all the time when he comes in talking about real estate. So I hit, we have our big three. We got our finance, financial fitness. We got our law talk with Jamie. We got our reality of real estate with Brock. Brock Fletcher and the selling team of Keller Williams. Again, full disclosure, we've used Keller Williams to sell Big House Holt, to buy Little House Lansing. He's helped us a lot. He's been a huge supporter of ours for years. Call Brock today. Brock Fletcher. 
Brock, Brock, Brock. 517-853-6408 is the office number. The big number, the super secret, not so super secret number anymore, is the cell phone number to Brock's pocket, 517-303-3262, 517-303-3262. Go online, kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com. Sell your home without hassles like we did. Buy your home without hassles like we did because Brock is a straight shooter. He invests thousands of dollars in marketing way, way in front of ever getting your business because when he does get your business or your phone call or you just reach out to him for a tip or some advice, which he'll take your call, there's no charge, just like Jamie does, just like Craig does. All of these people, these really good professionals, I guarantee you, they will take your call. They know what's going on. They don't need to, they want to, of course, be businessmen, but they they want to support you and they want to build that trust. We're going to talk about confidence and trust in just a second here, talking about what Jamie's covering today on our, on our Let's Talk Law uh, episodes. But Brock is just the best. Mike Deadman, I always like to say hi to Mikey because he was our buyer's agent when we bought Little House Lansing, where we are recording this episode. Again, like I said, Many agents spend when you list with them on the marketing side of things. Brock does not. Brock is an investor who will invest in marketing so that you get the best bang for your buck. And go check out all of our episodes of the Reality Real Estate on our website. And away you will go. He'll have, there's lots of questions there, just like we're going to have with Jamie as we continue to build this portfolio of episodes that we deal with. Let's talk law with Jamie. Jamie, we're talking today about the cl- clergy abuse, pretty much specifically. We're going to talk in the fifth segment about um, a little decompression for you and some hunter non hunter things. It'll change the topic a little bit. Getting back to what you were just talking about, I wrote down the revival window, and I was really curious as to well, you said that there are naysayers out there, and I'm just like, why in the heck would there be? Na- I, I, I think I know, but why would there be naysayers to people who wouldn't want this to be resolved because this type of abuse that when it's suppressed in people's memories and it affects their behavior, it affects their life it affects everything that they do. And they don't even realize why who could argue with something like that. I, I just, I, I wonder about the naysayers. What, what's the, what's the scoop? The easy answer is money. Um, you know, that, that, and it works both ways. Um, I can tell you that, uh, in the Nasser case, the numbers were confidential, but when we were mediating that case, um, a certain board member um, approached me and, you know, suggested um, what I would call pennies on the dollar and just kind of shoo shooed um, me away. And uh, he was a good friend. Um, and it wasn't until we passed legislation that their nose went wide open. Um, so, you know, the money is definitely a factor. They don't want to spend it. At the same time, um, what we know is every single case like this, nothing changes until you hit them in the pocketbook. You can write letters, you can have commercials, you can have picket signs, but nothing happens until you get hit in the pocketbook. And we saw that at Michigan State. Um, you know, the other thing, and this is unfortunate, is um, there is a serious contingent of Catholics who accept what happened, but feel that the church is under attack. And and, and that is just a matter of educating people, um, because what we know through civil litigation, and this is a very important piece, we have tools that are, don't exist in criminal law. You know, we have the power of discovery. And I can tell you that for every one predator that we find through the course of discovery and investigation, dozens more come out, are discovered. Um, so it's it's not only a tool to um, help the existing survivors, but we find that it's a tool um, to expose predators who otherwise would never be found. And what's unfortunate, Tom, and you know, this, when we talk with our national advocates about this, Michigan, if you don't think these guys seek the places where they can get away with it, you know, I've got some waterfront land in Iraq to sell you. They seek the places, you know, it's no accident 
that um, Larry Nasser volunteered for the high school gymnastics team, right? He that, he didn't like gymnastics. He wasn't a gymnast. He found that environment. And um, I'm not saying all priests are like this. I think the Catholic Church has come a long way to um, resolve this problem. But many of these priests historically thought this out. And um, I think when people understand that that is a problem that needed and still needs to be resolved, they'll they'll fall back from their fears of the church what we call the sky is falling that's the defense that you know they talk about and that's the way we like to describe it the sky is going to fall if if the church or the boy scouts and so on and so on um have to be accountable for what's occurred how stressful is it when you go through discovery jamie weiss with us everybody we're let's talk law we're talking about um sexual abuse clergy abuse or any type of abuse with children is just uh, just how hard is it on your from your perspective as as the attorney you have to you have to listen to all of this and for the victim to go through that's got to be very very rough it, it it is tom it's difficult there are some days that you know it 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 catches up with you um and you know i always tell my staff whether it's a traffic ticket or a victim of sexual abuse put yourself in their shoes. You know, that's the only way that you can reciprocate what they're saying. You know, if you're just sitting there checking boxes and not listening and not really trying to emphasize where they're coming from, it's very difficult to communicate with them. But at the same time that, you know, I tell my wife all the time, sometimes I come home and it's like, you know, I feel like energy is just pulled from me, you know, because you're listening to these stories. And, um, you know, when I was doing criminal law, um, you know, I would do the same thing, no matter how egregious their behavior was, or no matter how minor it was, you know, I would always try to put myself in these shoes. You know, I have a colleague who <laughs> he's a good friend and he's a good guy, but I, I'll, I'll never forget. He asked me, I don't know, this 10 years ago or so. And he said, how do you get all the, all that money out of these criminals? I said, first of all, I don't call them criminals. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, people make mistakes and so on and so on. But if you're looking through a lens that, these people, those people, um, and, and, and put yourself on some sort of pedestal. Um, it's first of all, it's not effective, but it is quite taxing to step into, um, the shoes of the victims and the accused and the people that need your help. Well, having the experience, and this is a, this is going to be a leading question because we're going to come up on break and we can finish the thread when we come back with Jamie, but the, um, having the experience being emotionally connected to this topic and knowing how to deal with this puts you in the forefront of being people that can litigate this correctly. It's just like all of our other professionals that are experienced with this, like financial fitness with Craig or, or real estate with Brock. But from your perspective, you and your team, you're used to this. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate thing, but at least you know how to deal with it. And so it's not like it's your first time. And, and that's another reason we have to em- implore people to think about this. Because again, if you're going to gain that confidence and trust back in the Catholic Church, you need to weed out all of these bad actors. So take 30 seconds to comment on that, and then we'll come back, we'll finish that, and then we'll talk more um, in the fifth segment about decompressing. Can you talk about that, please, emotionally connected? Yeah, and that that's a really important point. Um, you know, what we're seeing now uh, you know, the Me Too, the Me Too movement and, you know, some other this area has been um, exposed and to, to, in all fairness, I think to some degree, maybe a little bit too far, you know, the canceling of people over maybe comments and that sort of thing. I don't support what we've seen is because there's been publicity and there's been lucrative settlements. We have people, lawyers coming into the fray who do not have trauma informed experience and are simply there to try to make a buck. And not only do they screw up our litigation nine times out of 10, but, um, you know, they often leave victims very confused and, and disoriented. We're going to take a break right now, everybody. This is the Tom Matt show. My guest today, Jamie white, let's talk law. We're going to finish this thread because I knew that was a big point. And then after that, we're going to talk about how Jamie can get his sense of purpose back himself. Listen to The Tom Matt Show. 
Thank you again to our Segment 4 sponsor, Brock Fletcher, real estate agent at the selling team with Keller Williams Realty. For more information on services provided by Brock, please call his personal cell phone at 517-303-3262 or by emailing Brock at kwsellingteam.com. Welcome back to the Tom Matt Show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Love, love, love so much having these conversations with my very, very smart friends. I'm very grateful to have smart friends like Jamie White. Let's talk law because it's so layered. And Jamie was just talking about, we're going to get his contact info here in just a second, but when we get done getting Jamie's contact info, the trauma-informed litigation and the people that don't, you know, they see the dollars. And so they jump into the business, but they don't really have the experience like Jamie's got and his team's got dealing with all of these issues. You got to be really careful here. That's why you want to have a consultation with Jamie. And if you want to do that, Dan, Jamie, how would you suggest people get with you? Uh, you know, so Google, I'll pop up Jamie White Attorney. Um, our website is whitelawpllc.com. And if somebody wants to give us a call on the telephone, um, uh, five, they, there's multiple ways. We have a call center, but the number that's used most frequently is 517-316-1195. But any number that shows up on the website will land you to the right place. Very, very well done website, whitelawpllc.com. Check it out. It's on our website. You can go there. You can click through on all this. Um, it's Super high end website. I mean, we've got chats, we've got all kinds of good things happening over there. It's very, very well done, very professionally done. So, um, compliments to you Thank and your you. staff on that, Jamie, for doing that. I, Thank I, you. I want to finish the thread. You're welcome. I want to finish the thread of what we were just talking about with people jumping in um, to the law business without having the experience that you have and why this trauma informed litigation where they see the dollar signs and they hang a shingle out, I guess you'd say, and want to get your business because they want to get a piece of the pie. That's not what we're trying to do here, especially with this radio program. We want you to have confidence and trust in Jamie, but we also want you to have confidence and trust in your institution, just like at Michigan State, just like with the Catholic Church, all of it. We got to weed out these bad actors. The only way you weed out these bad actors, as Jamie said earlier, is have them pay. That's it. It's all about the money. You got to have people pay because you can, as Jamie said earlier, you can run ads, you can do everything, you can you can have picket signs, you can have uh, protests, whatever. Doesn't matter. Not going to matter. Finish that thread, would you please, Jamie, about that and and just why that you know with your vast experience with this, why it's just it's just safe because this is this is hard anyways. It's so it's so dang hard anyway. Yeah. So you know sometimes um, you know there are certain circumstances where the institutions don't know. Um, it's rare. I mean, the Boy Scouts literally have um, what we call the skeleton files of, you know, scout masters who have been reported. The Catholic Church, I, don't, I hate to make this comparison, but they keep the record keeping of how they move priests around um, was similar to what we saw in Germany in the, in the 1930s and 1940s as far as record keeping. It's all there. But there are um, situations where I think people don't believe it. And, you know, Dr. Nasser was one of those examples. Um, you know, there were several parents who came out in his defense until the evidence was overwhelming. Um, and I certainly do not believe that any of the doctors at Michigan State University knew what he was up to. Um, so, you know, it, it, again, it's now, I mean, my, my kids with all their broken bones, we're in that office. It seems like every other week now, but you know, they've changed their procedures. You know, there's a nurse in the room and you know, they, they want a parent there and um, you know, nothing's perfect, but um, what we're seeing is people are being more conscious of it. I can tell you when I was coaching Tom and my wife said, but this job has jaded me, but you know, we'd get like some guy would walk in, you know, I'm coaching sixth or seventh graders and I'm like, who's your kid? I don't have a kid here. Who's your grandkid? I don't have, where are you here? I'm trying to get experience. Get the hell out of here, man. You know, I don't you go get out of here, you know, and maybe that's over the top, but um, it's important that we keep our, our, our radar up because these guys pick their, you, their, you know, their areas. They don't 
get there and decide to be a predator. Um, you know, if it's a Boy Scout leader is a predator, he chose the Boy Scouts. Um, Larry Nasser chose to be around young women who were gymnasts, um, and, and I could go on and on. So it's just important that we keep our radar up as a community. Again, I hate the cancel culture where, you know, you, you make a dirty joke and all of a sudden you lose your job. I think that's way too far. Um, but there is a happy medium um, to make sure that kids are safe. Well, again, I want to close it with this, everybody. Having a, a a wife who was is refired from healthcare, and I was in higher ed, as everyone knows, and I'm Catholic, born Catholic myself. Jamie's exactly right. Doctors are held in this godlike status. Priests are held in this godlike status, and it's like their word is word. It's it's like gospel, and so those times have got to change. And there's there are plenty of good people out there. Many, many, many good people out there. Many good coaches. I've coached. I still coach. And it's just like Jamie said, you have to have awareness. You have to have your radar up and you have to be on top of your game with your kids and keep an eye on things. All right, let's take a break here and kind of shift gears. All of this heaviness has to lead to some kind of decompression for you. And we want to do these um, towards the end of the show um, episodes. I think we'll have some fun with this, with your ability to decompress in your way, the hunter, not hunter thing. Let's talk about what you've been doing, um, how important it is to you to do these things. I mean, obviously you have a lot of pressure on you with these cases. And so I have totally empathize with why you want to do this kind of thing. Please help inform other people. Maybe there's some guy, maybe men out there, men and women who um, it's just work, 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 work. And they, they don't have that. You had that, li- that list of four things, but you can only do three. Could you share that please? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you can, you can work, you can have friends, you can have business, you know, or you can go out and play and it's difficult to do all four, you know, on some level, something has to give. Um, but it, you know, in a limited scope for me, um, you know, I, I love the outdoors. I've always loved the outdoors. And despite the fact that I represent hundreds of boy scouts, I was a boy scout and I loved it. It was one of the best experiences of my life. You know, I caught my first fish when I was four years old, a pike in the Eaton County in the Grand River. And, um, you know, they put it in the newspaper and the whole deal. And I was addicted at that point in time. Um, So, you know, I like I I love to hunt. Um, I only shoot things I eat. Um, That's that's a big thing to me. Um, And I love to fish. And I when I do do these trips, Tom, you know, I leave the cell phone away right i'm you know i might be sitting in a tree where i could be making phone calls but i don't um you know i go down to costa rica about every three months by myself people think i'm crazy but i go down there by myself and i have a woman down there that sets me up with a boat and i fish and you know spend time just kind of um you know thinking through things Uh, i'm going to new zealand next month uh, with one of my hunting buddies and we're gonna hunt stag and we're taking our wives they're going to be hunting spas and jewelry and God knows what, but, uh, you know, and he also, he's a forensic scientist and works all the time. And so him and I, um, spend a lot of time together in the outdoors, um, hiking, fishing, hunting. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a great release, you know, and I love it. It's great exercise. And, um, it, it does, I always come back, you know, more balanced than I left. How do you how do you keep yourself in physical uh, conditioning? Because we talked a little bit about you and I maybe getting together for a session or two here and there at the university, do some training with you. But how do you do it on your own now um, and stay in shape? Because you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. So I ran. Um, so I, you know, I was an athlete. Um, you know, most of my young life. You know, even post high school, intramural every single day. Blah blah blah. Um, and then uh, in my 30s, I ran marathons. Um, I ran uh, three marathons. I ran probably 20 half marathons and more five Ks than I can count. I had I had a couple injuries and, and wasn't able to continue running, but um, started, you know, uh, for, before COVID, I was in the MAC, the Michigan Athletic Club, every morning at 5 a.m. with a professional trainer, um, lifting weights, getting the blood pumping before I go to work. Admittedly, <laughs> COVID kind of slowed things down a little bit and uh you know i need to get back on the horse but um you know it's important my doctor told me a long time ago you know the difference between being a couch potato and staying active is the difference between being able to climb up the stairs when you're older being able to play golf 
um, you know, and, and I want to do those things. So I, I do my best to stay active. My wife is active. My kids are very active. So, um, you know, I'm very blessed in that way. We'll, we'll talk more about this in upcoming episodes, everybody. Thank you, Jamie, for sharing that little tip for everybody. What would your takeaway be for this episode, Jamie, that you'd like to close with? We got about a minute and a half to go here. What would you like to close with? You know, I just, I, 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 I hope the community will um, pay a little more attention to the important things that are going on. I, you know, I'm not going to say what my political affiliation is. I don't think it's important. Most people that know me know what it is, but I think we're in a world where people are getting their news from Facebook. Um, and I, I think that is a, very dangerous dark tunnel that we're headed down you know when i was a young man you know you would watch the nightly news and you know read the new york times maybe your local newspaper and that is what led you to or the wall street journal that's what led you to make a decision about what kind of leadership we want and i think we've gone down a very dark rabbit hole where information is being parsed out oftentimes completely inaccurate and people who otherwise would not have read the newspaper are sucking it up and it's dangerous and that's a really good closing point and that's why we like to do this radio program because you're going to get straight straight stories with us from a from a man like jamie white and his whole staff at white law let's talk law with jamie jamie that was an excellent interview thank you so much if our show fits your business or group's mission we want to be of service to you as do our sponsors Please look them up. That's why they're on this show, so that you can continue to learn and we can continue to get better. Always remember, before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. I like to close the show with that every time. Thanks to Jamie White, Sandy, Craig, Brock Fletcher. We'll talk to everybody next week and have a great week. Remember, the Tom Mack Show is a production of Boomers Rock Media. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you to Mitch Anderson, our producer puts us on the radio and gets it done. Thank you so much. We are out. The Tom Matt Show is produced by Mitch Anderson, Black Circle Studios. Original music from the source of light and power by the Ark of All.